Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne, and today we're going to paint a nuthatch. And a nuthatch is a, a little sweet bird that can go vertically down a tree. Just, you know, it, it creeps down a tree. And uh, this painting is done in acrylic paint. Now, most of you guys are used to me painting in oil, but I have a project that I'm working on that is a, uh, a client in Kentucky that has me painting all their cabinets. And you can see there's a stack of cabinets over here. And I have even more in my dining room at the house. And um, I'm painting their cabinets in acrylic paint with wildlife scenes on it. So in today's video, I'm going to take you from start to finish on a little tiny nut hatch. The total process or time went into it was about 25 minutes, not too very long. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I did that in acrylic paint. So paint along if you want to, or sit back and watch, and I'll take you on the little journey of the nut hatch. Now here is the paint that we're gonna be using for this little nut hatch. Remember folks, this is acrylic paint. So I work with it a bit differently, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what colors I have. This is burnt sienna, titanium white, ivory black, Oh, cobalt blue and just a gray, basically, uh, paint that I've got. And I'm just gonna go put on this little nut hatch onto um, a panel that is actually a door panel. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the panel. This is um, one of the uh, um, door panels I have for a client in uh, Kentucky that is wanting wildlife all over their stuff. And I painted, a, this is a tree that's going by the, uh, where did they say that was going? Over by their uh, refrigerator. Anyhow, they asked for a nut hatch. They wanted some type of vertical type bird coming down this tree. So uh, working with the acrylic paint, I have to work really quickly. So I'm taking a little bit of the gray and the blue that you saw on there. And I'm using, the brush I'm using, actually was a freebie given to me by Jerry's Art of Rama uh, in Knoxville. Thank you, Scott. It's a long round Princeton Velvet Touch. Now, this, per, this little brush is pretty handy because it's, um, even though it's technically, I guess, a watercolor brush, it's, it's fine for acrylic paint. So, of course, the nuthatch is a very small vertical bird, and I'm just going to try to stay within the confines of um, my spaces here. Now, with acrylic paint, obviously it does dry pretty fast, so I will use that as my to my advantage. I'm gonna bring this down since I'm starting a little bit. There we go. A little bit high for you here. I'm gonna suggest that these are the wingtips coming over here. And um, the shoulder here. The head will come out this way. So I know it's going to look weird at first because you're not going to understand what I'm putting in here. But bear with me. It'll all come together. You'll see a bird. I'm going to take a little bit of white, mixing it in with a little bit of the gray that's already in my brush. And I start his little, his little rump. So remember, he's coming down off the tree. So it's kind of weird because you don't actually know where I'm going yet. Remember, with, with acrylic paint, you don't have a lot of work time, right? So I'm going to bring his little head around, and he's going to be looking up. So you can see why I added a little bit of gray to this paint. So you'll be able to see when I have my contrast, I mean my uh, values this close, I have to be really um, careful because I don't like to have them that close. And so I'm putting in, blending that in a little bit, giving them, add a little bit of that dark gray that I had, that I mixed here. I'll put a little bit of that right here to the chest of this little nut hatch. I know you're probably still going, what? But all of a sudden it's gonna come into focus and you're gonna be like, oh, I get it. And then you can watch this again, knowing exactly where it's going. It'll make, it'll make sense. So this is gonna be his little head turning up, looking towards you. Now, he's got a pretty interesting little mask or cape. So I'm taking some of the ivory black, 
mix in some of the cobalt blue and I'm going to start making this little mask. Again, I'm going to use my stroke coming out and I want to get this in pretty fast today. The next little piece I'm going to be doing is for a client that I generally do several Christmas presents for over the years and it's going to be some an animal species that I've been wanting to paint for a long time and it's the West Highland cattle. So stay tuned. So you can see this is starting to become little bird's top of his head. And I'm going to put his beak in. Now that's why this brush is pretty nifty. Um, it is very versatile. Now they have an interesting bill. I think I see these birds I think of my grandmother they used to have my grandparents always had a um, bird feeder by the uh, they had a big picture window in their um, dining area and we could always watch the birds and um, that was just a special memory okay so see that's starting to be a little bird's bill right <laughs> now it's making sense sometimes like I said for projects like this I'm going to paint a little bit of a different style it's not that different than what I usually do with um, oils, but knowing that my medium dries super fast, I have to kind of work quickly. So I'm not really doing a lot of explanation here, but you're able to watch what I'm doing here. So it's, it's okay. I'm gonna take that same blue black color that I've mixed, start adding in areas of the shoulder, still wet which is which is delightful for me because I'm not used to you know I'm more used to oil paints so for me this is good that I have this little bit more work time wing here and we have wings going right to the tip here and I'm just going to kind of bring this down because I can put the light colors on top this bird out just a tiny bit because I think I've, I've about shortened them up too much. I, I probably made them too big if, if the truth be known but I'm good with it. Um, I'm going to bring this part of his body out a little bit more so i got to bring this out a little bit more so we're going to bring it out so this makes a little bit more sense. We're just going to have an especially big going back in with this color. Make it work and see this is the advent you know for folks who who watch who've been watching me paint now I'm putting straight titanium white on top and this is already dry pretty well now there we go I got a little blend there and I'm gonna bring his chest out a little bit more and bring this out a little bit more and I'm gonna kind of give him little little fluffs now I'm, I'm using, there's a lot of, there's very little paint on here and it's a lot of um, um, water on my brush. So that kind of allows me to do these little fluffy pieces. And I just saw an opportunity, so I took it. And I'm gonna load a little bit more paint on here. Try to leave it a little thicker, get a little bit more chest here. These, these little birds are fun because they do, they go, they can walk around upside down. Let's give him a little bit of, now I'm gonna put a little bit more gray in his face. 
and I suggest where I, so when I put the hairs on top, the little hairs, I say, I say hairs, but the feathers, it'll kind of make sense. And I'm going to, because I have a lighter background, I'm going to give him an underneath here. This is a very limited palette, folks. So you can see I'm just kind of making little feathery strokes around his head. brush is really doing the trick here for me. It's a good little brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white since I still have it's wet here. I'll see if it blends for me. I don't want it too much. where the, the black part of the hood comes around his side of his face so you can see there's a difference between his little head and that hood. Okay, so just kind of see how I'm using short little feathery strokes, right? I'm going to bring this down a little bit here. So sometimes when I'm morphing like this, and you can see I'm morphing all over the place, I've already elongated the bird, I can also see where I need to go on his shoulder. So I'm gonna bring his shoulder down. So this is, there we go. He's starting to fill out, and I'm starting to feel better about him. I'm looking at all his different feathers and I'm going in dark at first because I can once I got them established where they need to be I can go in darker or I mean lighter excuse me okay again he's elongated but that's okay now I'm gonna go in with a lighter color I'm taking a little bit of the, just a little bit of the titanium white and cobalt blue. And I'm going to start to scallop his little edges of his feathers here. S suggest that this is where his, and he's got some little scalloping going on here. of feathers and I'm just going to do these little stripes here 
representing his feathers that go in this way, in this place. And in here, we have other. And then here, you're only going to see the very tops of each one of the primaries that are stacked up. I'm actually using, I've used the same brush for this whole piece. And I, I, this is a quickie, folks. I'm just showing you a very quick rendition of <laughs> a nuthatch. Um, and like I said, I paint a little bit differently when I'm painting for um, acrylic paint like this. saw somebody that's kind of parked right in a weird spot that looks like they could be coming in here. I hope. I don't think so. They may not be coming in here. Listen to me. Please don't come in here. Nope, they're driving away. <laughs> Sorry guys. This is, you get to hear my brain working out loud here today. Okay, so I've got these little areas of the wings kind of established. I'm going to go ahead and lighten it up even a little bit more on the edges here. So I'm you can see the load on that I'm putting on the brush, if you can see it. It's just a little tiny, see that little white tip? Sometimes I just like that little white tip to do the work. And I just kind of hit the edges of the feathers. Just hit these little edges right here. And it's, it's, I'm not like highlighting it. I'm just barely hitting it, folks. And I don't want to make it look like I'm outlining them. Um, I just want to give them a little distinction, that's all. Now, I'm going to go a little bit lighter on his back. Start to you know kind of give him a little little hump to hump here on this part of his back. Um, and he's starting to he's starting to look like a little guy, like a little nut hatch. Um, give him a little bit more distinction on his underbelly here. If I do make it too white, I can always add them a little, a little bit more. Just gonna... The folks that I'm doing this painting for, they're really sweet people. And um, I'm honored that they, they wanted to let me do this for them. I used to do a lot of murals um, in this area of East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. I used to do a ton of murals, and um, I really don't do them anymore. It's just too, uh, it's a little labor intensive for me. And um, but people remember that I used to do that, and they know that I'm a wildlife person. So this is kind of as close to doing murals anymore that I that I feel comfortable doing. eye a little bit whiter here 
it's okay to leave it a little impasto here because it just kind of adds to the, the look of feathers. And I'm going to give it a little lift here. So we can see some of these other feathers kind of poking out. Same here. And I'll, I'll emphasize his eye a little bit better here in a minute. The trick to doing, um, whether you're doing fur or feathers, is starting with a darker value underneath. So when you put the lighter value on top, you can actually get the depth. You get the concept of depth, okay? Remember that. That was one of the very first things I learned. <laughs> um, from, he was a, he's a wildlife artist named Philip Crow. We're talking like 35, 40 years ago almost. Yeah, I'm dating myself. I'm really that old. But, um, well, it was, it was probably more like, um, yeah, probably 35 years ago. And I had the, I, at that time I was a watercolor artist, but I painted um, in a very um, acrylic or oil painterly style um, because that's what my mom painted with. And that's what I was used to seeing, even though I was painting with watercolor. And, uh, he was the one who said, start with your dark values first. And that, if, if, if you're my student, you'll know that that's kind of, a, it's almost developed into a meme uh, with my people. And that they'll say, yeah, dark values, dark values. They're, you know, they're going to have shirts made, says dark values. Um, because that's what I'm always preaching. I am seriously always preaching that. Okay, folks, we're, we're, I'm going to do some little feet and we're going to be wrapping it up pretty soon. highlight on this side because I would suggest that the light is hitting him over here. Um, I'm make him a little bit more light right here on the top of his head. Just to give him more um, definition. All right, I kind of just suggested where his little eye was going. I'm going to go back in with this kind of grayish blue color and kind of uh, go underneath this eye firm up the size and shape of it a little bit. They do have a, a bright little eye. Um, kind of left that little bit alone <laughs> to give it some shine, but I can give him a proper shine here in a minute. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good for his little eye. I'm not going to with it too much. It's just like a little, I'm going to give him a little bit of this pottery lid and I'm just going to take the little tiny piece of this brush right underneath it, like little dots, right? And I'm going to take a little bit of the cobalt blue, mix it in. Titanium white, and I know I left that little shine place, but I'm going to give him a more proper, proper shine. And a little white spot there. All right, folks, I'm going to give him some feet. And now I don't really have to give him feet. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a little bit of this brown, a little bit of this black, and go underneath my bird just a tiny bit because I have this darker value. I mean, this, I brought this um, um, part of the bird's tail up and I don't like that the values are so close. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken this value of the tree up a little tiny bit. Same over here. I don't want so much of this little fluff here. It's too much. Um, you wouldn't really necessarily see that much of this bird's feet anyway if he's coming down this way. I'm going to go right underneath here and suggest that there's almost like a shadow. See, I just want it to look like he's kind of coming down there and that's a shadow. Let's face it, I don't know where the light is coming from on this piece. It's all over the place, but I think that 
viewer might, you know, they would, they would believe me if I did that. <laughs> Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Because right below this little nut hatch is a chipmunk. And um, I'm going to just kind of suggest that there's, you know. like that folks. I wanted to give him a little bit of this little dark area under his chin because this part of his I'm just going to kind of suggest that his little little chin I'm going to give him a little bit of a lighter value. Yeah, a tiny bit. I don't know. I'm just not going to put his feet in there, folks, because he's the way I have him positioned, you probably wouldn't see his feet, okay? So, there is a nut hatch. Basically done in less than 25 minutes. Bam! See? Not so bad. It was, you know, I started off with my, basically my gray value, my mid-tone value, just to kind of get the shape of the bird in. And you can see, here's, here's the picture of the finished piece. And, you know, it's a little bit of a different painting style since acrylic paint does dry so quickly. It's easy to stack the paint without any blending. And that's basically what I did here. And, I, you know, I was able to knock it out in about 25 minutes. And, yeah, not so bad. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. So if you have any questions about anything I covered in this little video, and I know this is a short one, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. I'll get to it. And, um, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like today's video. And uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. So until next time from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thanks for joining me. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.